Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. My name is Brandon. I'm Darren. And welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Update Roundup Show. I'm dressed up again because I just finished doing a session with the high school. Yes, you uh, did. Take my hat off here. Trying yeah. to find the best times to record these shows now when we're doing webinars at all kinds of times in the day. Yeah, we're busy on the webinar side of thing. It was uh, we did the the leveraging social media yep. for uh, education and employment opportunities is really uh, taking root. We did another one today. It was pretty cool. Yep. Had a good time. Let's talk about some news stories in the news. In the news. First story uh, popped up actually today in, in our news feed was Tesla Model X be able to hack in, uh, was it 90 seconds? Is yeah, that I read that. I read that. It's, uh, I just read in my news feed and said, hey, we've got to add this. I mean, it's, uh, we know that over the past couple of years in the Black Hatter conferences, right, like university computer science teams are, have been showing how they've been hacking into smart cars, right? Like, mm -hmm. it was only a matter of time because te if there's a smart car in the market, it's a Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. like, I kind of like Teslas. I wouldn't mind getting one, actually. They're kind of cool. Oh, yeah. But then <laughs> I saw this in under three minutes, something that fits in a backpack, apparently, right? Like, yeah. you can hack and get into well, it and drive away in three uh, minutes. Uh, these are connected cars, and Tesla's pushing updates to them as we speak. Yeah. So this kind of reminds me of the one we did. Uh, what was it last week or the week before? Where if somebody flashes up a stop sign, on oh the yeah, board, I think that's a little more dangerous than someone stealing your car, or someone crashing your car. But again, with technology, with the convenience of technology, comes vulnerability, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Tesla's kind of cool, electric car, less gas, less emissions. It's cool, mm -hmm. but with technology comes vulnerability. You know, Elon is uh, starting up and launching the beta program for the Starlink now. Is it what is that the, uh, the GPS? The, no, the the satellite internet. Yeah, the satellite. Yeah, it's internet. like a, a certain latitude and longitude, like on a certain like yeah. hemisphere of the Earth, like yeah, people yeah. can can sign up for the beta program yeah. and get internet from satellites from Elon. I mean that that was his whole push behind his SpaceX program, right? Yes. Not only to put people in the spacecrafts for the uh, and NASA, but also to launch. <sighs> yes, all these Elon. GPS. We know you're going to own the future. We know that already with your spaceships and your satellites and your internet. And I want to create a spaceship that goes up and captures the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, Tesla that's up there with the space cowboy in it oh, that, yeah. that he launched. I want to be able capture that i mean that'd be cool it'd be worth a lot of money yeah i mean well, i guess the whole thing is you know who owns that now because it's not really in oh that's money. a good point yeah who owns space i'm sure there's some i'm sure it's in some it's agreement. probably it's probably kind of like the ocean right if you find a boat floating in the middle of the ocean and nobody's on it and it's being abandoned then you can claim it as yours it's your property now yeah maybe space right maybe the new space force Right, you don't trust space force. Every time I think of that, I think it's Star Star Storm Trooper or was Space Trooper, whatever it was that movie. Mm. Storm Troop. Oh, what was it? Storm Trooper. No, anyways. Okay. Okay, boomer. Okay. Um, next on the show, uh, Mozilla keeps updating its uh, smart technology privacy not included web page. I mean, yeah. so this is a collection and reviews of tech products, which is really important given it's coming into December now. Yeah. And what they've done is they look at the products look at the, how they function, look at issues in the past, and you look at the privacy policies, yep. and they kind of give consumers an update on, you know, is this a device something that protects your privacy or not? And we just said it, with convenience comes vulnerability, right? And a lot of this, these new digital gizmos and trinkets that are coming out for Christmas this year are becoming popular. Some of them have some real privacy issues and that's what this yeah. report's all about. Yeah, I see uh, from the screen here, I, I kind of filtered uh, all the ones where privacy is not included. Some really interesting ones. So, if, you know, if you have someone in the family, they have a gift list, maybe, you know, as a tech product, maybe just, you know, double check, make sure it's, you know, not on this list. Yeah, for sure. Just to, I mean, I saw a coffee maker that was on there. I know. And it was, it said, uh, it collects your data, but there was no way to, in the privacy policy, it doesn't stipulate that if you can delete the data. Uh, it's interesting, right? It's interesting on what kind of devices are actually connecting and, 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 and collecting information, right? Yeah. Like it was actually, really? A coffee machine, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. It's kind of interesting. Right? Yeah. So a great little uh, resource to look at if you have some gift or tech things on your list this holiday season. Keep that in mind. But also look out for the scams. Yeah, I found this one online. It was brought to my attention, and it's uh, you know the Better Business Bureau. Anytime during holiday seasons, especially now that we're, we're COVID, a lot of people are shopping online and mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. There's all these uh, ploys out there, right? The, these scams, and this was the big one, the gift giving. You know, I kind of think about it like the uh, the the fairy thing that was happening during the summer, right? The gift fairy, you know, and mm, all that kind of stuff, right. and people were taking advantage of that. So same thing here. Great article. It's on our Facebook page read about it you know these are kind of cool if you're using a group that you know people right. but this one was just 
flooded uh, Facebook, especially, and people were actually joining up to it. I'm a random being, person joining this. I put know, your data here. Mm -hmm. I know, and mm -hmm. people were getting scammed as a result of it. So uh, it's actually gotten a lot of hits on our Facebook page. Uh, it's one of those ones, and a lot of people, are, yeah, we we saw that too. We saw that too. So again, just education, education, education. Mm -hmm. If it's too good to be true, there's something true. And when anybody asks you to put in all kinds of personal information, eh, 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 warning, 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 right? So, yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. during Christmas, right? Definitely. Just and COVID. The combination of the yeah, two, right? Yeah, with everything now digital and as virtual Christmases. Well, you know, or I'm going to be honest, you know. We to our American said, friends who are having Thanksgiving next yeah, week. Is that yeah. next week? It's We're in Canada this, right now. Yeah, this weekend coming up, right? Yeah. This weekend. Black Friday is this Friday, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and then oh, yeah, I saw, Monday, I saw some right? notifications from Amazon going deals early. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We've done all our Christmas shopping on Amazon. Hmm. Hate to say that, but it's true, because we just didn't want to go into stores and stuff. Oh no, I take back some of that. We did go into some smaller boutique stores that we want to support. Okay. Uh, we were in Chinatown. We went to one store there and stuff. So no, yeah, but a lot of the shopping that we did, we did on Amazon. So, so all right, yeah. Oh, uh, to kind of prove the message when we say nothing online is 100% private, because uh, sometimes some apps have flaws in them. Good example, uh, Facebook Messenger yeah. had a bug in it that allowed callers to listen into unattended calls. Essentially, what happened here was there was a vulnerability. Someone found that someone could call while sending a special message. Um, while someone was logged into the Messenger app on Android or another client like a web browser. Mm -hmm. And the result would allow the caller to allow to hear the recipient's audio right. until they attended the call or timed out. Yeah, it's, so, like, it's like we always say, everything you do online, no matter what your privacy settings, is public, permanent, searchable, exploitable, copyable, shareable, and a lot of times it's for sale. Yeah, right? and the bigger an app is, the more complex an app is, it's just statistically more likely there's going to be a flaw in the app. For sure. The more code someone writes, and, which is written by humans, as we know of today, yeah. <laughs> we make mistakes. Yeah, for sure. So just things to look out for. So you know, if you have a pending update for your Messenger app, just update it. Yeah, always update. Yeah, update yeah. all your apps. Updates always plug the holes. In. Although we'll talk about Apple's updates in a bit. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> uh, before you know before, app, before you know we get an, there, you know I'm an Apple su supporter. Fan, before right? we get there, first off, in terms of privacy, uh, announced at their latest, latest uh, conference. We're not there yet. Announced at their last conference regards to adding a nutrition label system into app privacy, which is kind of similar to what Facebook does right now. So what's this all about? So we all know that terms of services, all these big, massive legal documents and little Need tiny law font. degree. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, but we and we've seen what Facebook's done in the past, you know, last six years, and that they've made. They have like two policies. They have their the main policy, but then they have a summarized version, right. which uses pictures, English language, right. so the average consumer can understand. Yeah. Apple's making this more of like a policy in their app store where developers have to add like bullet point responses to questions going, what data do you collect? Do you collect location data? That right, kind of stuff. Right, right, right. So it's really, so at a, at a quick glance, you can see this app is trying to access this information. Gotcha. Which is great. It is. Good on Apple for doing that, right? It's all about privacy, privacy, privacy. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Apple had an oopsie in regards to its Big Sur launch, which is its um, new operating system for its computers. So what happened here is when Apple launched their new operating system, yes. people downloaded it. But people having issues opening their apps. So can I just comment quickly? Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I have I, I never net download anything that's new right away. I always give it a couple months to have them work out bugs because any new release there's always bugs. Yeah. Right. So continue. So the bug here was is apparently in Apple's new going forward plan is all world domination. Naturally. Uh, <laughs> is their plan is to basically have, in order to control apps, make sure the apps you install on your computers are legitimate and they're not malware, they're not malicious. Right. Every app you open calls home to Apple. Oh. Which. E.T. Fun home. What that means in technical e. speak. Did you ever watch that movie? Yes. Okay. What that means is every app you open, data is sent to Apple, your IP address, what app, where you're located, time is open. Okay, just before you go on. Cal, we're talking about Apple the company, not an Apple you eat. Okay. 
continue. Uh, so that's what happens there. Uh, now, what's additionally interesting is researchers figured out that this data, your IP address, the app name, right. when you open it, right. it's not only sent to Apple, but it, the server went down on Apple when it launched. So people couldn't open their apps because in order for it to verify the app, you right. need to call home to the server. Call home. Which it didn't exist. People had to shut down the laptops, turn off the internet, right. and do workarounds to open right. their apps. Right. Which is the issue of having an all-in-one system controlled by one person. Right. In that you rely on their systems to be up 24-7. Gotcha. What's also worse about this is that Apple, this data sent to Apple is in an unencrypted format. Okay, that's what I can't figure out. Yeah, Apple like, hasn't really yet really responded to that. So they're using HTTP, that. not the HTTPS. Correct. So all the what? data, so the, so when you open an app, the data is sent to Apple to verify. Okay, you open this app, right. it's legitimate. Okay, yeah. open, go ahead, app system, open it up. Well, that information is sent via an unencrypted signal. So anyone on your network, anyone on a Wi-Fi network you're on. Like at a hotel. Hotel, coffee shop, right. your internet service provider, yeah. uh, because it goes through the internet cables, yeah. governments potentially. Yeah. So it's sent in, a, so your IP address, the app you open, when you open it, all that data is sent in an unencrypted unsecured format. Like, why would they do that? People, people are thinking, well, what if, what if I use a VPN and I tunnel my internet yes. connection through a secure portal, which yes. is, we recommend that. Yeah, you know, sure. Use VPNs. Will that work? No, because this system is baked into the, into the system before VPNs even are enabled. So even if you use a VPN, this data is still sent okay, to so Apple. Okay, so privacy, I mean, Apple prides themselves on prop, uh, privacy is their key foundation. Yeah. Why would they do this? Maybe it was an oopsie from a developer who just forgot to make it a secure portal that that happens on. Isn't it the easiest way just to turn it from an HTTP into an HTTPS? Technically, you need certificates and you need verification processes. But I mean, for Apple, I'm, I'm assuming that's an easy fix. Why wouldn't they do that? Has and the fact it goes and in the fact it, it does that outside of VPN connections is a huge issue. Yeah. Yeah. Like that 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 makes no sense. Like Apple. Like. What? what are you doing there? What are you doing? What are you doing, Apple? I'm an Apple fan more than he is. And I promote Apple. Like I love Apple and its privacy, its ease of use, its you know, it's 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 the, everything works, right? It just works, like they say, it just no, works. But I, I like Apple, but it comes with significant challenges because if something if your laptop breaks, you cannot go to a third party mom and pop's repair shop. You can't do it. Most cases you have to toss your laptop. Yeah, but you, now the question is, do you trust the people at the mom and pop places? Because now what we're finding is a lot of people in the mom and pop places are actually doing, putting like malware and stuff. Unlikely. In well, whatever. Very unlikely. Whatever. We've got case after case of that. Not a whole lot, though. Not whatever. a whole lot. PC. I, I wish they'd bring back the PC versus Mac. Remember those commercials when they when they started very, you know, a couple well, years ago? Didn't and, you watch the last conference? No. They did quickly. Oh, did they? Yeah. They brought John Hodgman back just very quickly. Oh, I missed for that. that. I missed it that. It was at the very end. I must have been getting a drink. It was at the very end. Oh. They brought him back just, just to like, like tongue in cheek going, haha, yeah, we did this before. But come on. I mean, Apple, what are you doing on this one? Like, have, has this, obviously, this is being brought to the attention of Apple. Uh, yeah. Have they responded? Uh, they said they're not doing anything malicious. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you can never. Oh, God, you know. Then, then if you're not doing anything malicious, then why not change it just to make sure? Like, what? I would assume they're probably going to. Think. Um, I mean, another good reason why, you know, I on major upgrades like this to the Apple operating system, I never go to the next one until such time as I've given it a month or two months. Yeah. Because there's always issues, well, right? Well, this is especially important because now that Apple's moving to their M1 chip, which is a completely... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Their yeah. own chip. Their own ecosystem. The problem own. is, is that... It's not all the apps that you download or use may be as efficient on this new chip because developers who make the apps we right. use, they have to like manually kind of so program the app. I to wonder work. how this is going to affect like Intel's bottom line now, right? Like, <laughs> buy Intel. AMD already is smoking them out of the water. I like, know. Intel is probably going to. I don't know. Intel has to like drop their prices dramatically to be anywhere competitive. If you're a gamer, no. Intel, no. If you are a, a high-performance user, Intel, no. I mean, as a company, we're watching very closely the M1 and what's going on, right? And how it's kind of interesting to see how the Mac Mini is basically more powerful and can do more things than the MacBook Pro that we bought. I mean, that was, what, seven grand? 
something like that. Like, I mean, it was the top of the line <laughs> one to do all the photo editing when we're doing. Well, with yeah. the new M1 chip, you can get one for about like fifteen hundred dollars, and it can do more than this powerhouse can do right yeah. now. Right? It's kind of cool. But I, I, I think you're right. You were mentioning that this time next year they'll have the M2 chip, which will blow the M1. Well, you just look at the generational leap between the iPad, the regular iPad, and the iPad 2. Yeah. The leap from that generation to the next was so substantial that Apple abandoned the regular iPad yeah. really fast. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I mean, not saying that, you know, don't go and buy these things because they're great, powerful machines. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, if you, if you wait a year, you might get something double the power. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, the MacBook Pro I have right now is just working fine. It's good for what it is I do. Well, I, you're not video editing. No, I'm not video editing. So, you know, I don't need a bigger, more powerful machine. But as a company, you know. <laughs> you just need a bigger screen. I know, my <laughs> eyes, right? Uh, that's the, you know, I was looking at the, because really there's no difference between the uh, MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, except the cooling. MacBook Pro is cooling. The uh, MacBook Air. And the MacBook Pro, you can get a 15 inch where the Air is only 13. But, you know, all the, every everybody's come out and basically saying they're, they're the same, the machine. But Depending on your workload. If yeah. you're doing creative workload, you need the cooling to cool the system to run faster, more efficiently. Does the MacBook Mini, or sorry, does the Mac, Mac Mini? Mini have a cooling system? Yeah, it has a cooling system in it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So if you're doing creative work, like what I'm doing in terms of video editing and, and, and creative design work, then, then yeah. We'll have to you, look at that next you definitely year. definitely want to get... comes out. Yeah. yeah. But people, people were testing, like, if you're just doing basic, like, video editing, 1080p level stuff, the MacBook Air works... Great. I saw people doing 4K editing on a 4K I I timeline I on that. a MacBook Air. I saw that. I saw so that. So you can do that. Yeah, kind of cool. So, I mean, I mean. What else we got on? Was that it? Well, that's it. Like, why would Apple do that? <laughs> I don't know. Why not just make it HTTPS? Like, come on, guys. You were mentioning they're a part of the five eyes, right? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, governments can request data from Apple. Apple can turn it over. But, I mean, why, so, would, why request data from Apple when, if you're a government, you control so just, all the entry and So, just points? to be clear, though, if, if I'm using it in a hotel room, people may be able to see that I'm signing into Tor, but they won't be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. Let's make that clear. And that they can see the apps you use, but they right. can't see what you're using the app for. Correct. So, if you are doing something malicious on so, a web browser... That won't be detected. I mean, assuming you're not using a VPN. Um, but if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, people can see the app. But the app can give you information. If you're someone, and I'm suspicious of you, doing something bad, and you're using Tor, and I see you're using Tor because I see that data now, I'm probably going to pay a little more attention to you. So what if before I connect to the hotel, I'm already on a VPN on my system, and then I sign into the hotel Wi-Fi, will Apple still be able to see me using a specific... Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah, because the apps phone home. So, a good Apple. example for those of you who are in hotel rooms on business trips going into <clears throat> Pornhub, um, they'll be able to see that you're on Pornhub, but they no. won't. But they won't be able to see what you're doing on. I Pornhub. mean, unless there's a th unless there's a downloadable app for that program. You, most people access the website through a web browser. Gotcha. So they'll see you got to use. Chrome. So it's only the app. Yeah, the Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Gotcha. Now that being said, if you're not using a secure connection, not using VPN, then it doesn't right. matter anyways. Right. No, there you go. But all right, yeah, big quick show. Yeah, that was quick good. to the point. All right, you got uh, you got some stuff to do. Uh, I got some You're upgrades. You're excited. You're excited. I know you are. You bought some upgrades to the whole virtual studio and that kind of stuff. So you're kind of excited because you get to take that main computer apart and put in some new stuff. Yeah, and hopefully not break it when we have to work tomorrow. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> I never forgot. Now you're gonna wait. Well, it, it, if something does go down, just plug in the main camera to this computer there, and run off this computer. If you need to, we can we can manage. But I mean, like, yeah. All right, all right. Well, on behalf of myself, I'm Darren and Brandon. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. See you guys. Bye. Bye now.